Welcome to it. This is it. The absolute first stream from me, Gerard K. Marino, GKM. I've got to uh, turn that off. It was coming in live on the speakers on my other computer. So, welcome to it. I figured, uh, why should you kids have all the fun? I'm going to step in and have a little fun, too. I write music for video games. Best known for that original Greek God of War series of games. Uh, I write music for other media as well. And I'm going to show you how I do it in this Twitch screen. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll probably move it to YouTube as well. But uh, we're going to start here first. Video game music production. DJ production. Because I'm remixing mine and others music and taking it on the road so i'm going to show you how i do what i do uh tell a few jokes in between i've been doing a lot more voice acting as of late we'll probably get into some of that so there'll be uh music production in general a lot of jokes going on in between all of that and i might even get into some other lifestyle things like cooking drinking and uh, exercise even. Who knows? Because uh, I'm kind of a, what I like to call a method composer. You know, I think you should bring a piece of you to everything you write. And uh, it's all part of everything. Life is, well, it's a big yin-yang of stuff. Everything that happens to us, uh, that's what makes us unique, you know? Because the harmonic series, you know, the people who write music that is truly original have found ways to systematically uh, get away from the harmonic series, the things that vibrate within everyone's soul. The reason all music goes one, four, or five, it's got a harmonic series component to it. So uh, if you're going to write music that people like, there's going to be some harmonic series component. You're going to be part of the tradition that's been going on <laughs> since time immemorial. And uh, how are you going to do something original when all those notes have been arranged almost every possible way? Well, you're going to bring some of yourself to it. That's what I say. That's the only thing. You're the only person who's lived your life. I'm the only person who's lived mine. The entirety of my life, my musical experience, my musical life, I try to bring some aspect of that to whatever I write. And that's how you're going to do it, too. You folks who are aspiring composers or current composers, I think that's how we do it. You know, we got to put on other clothes, but it's still us inside it all, right? That's what I see anyway. So uh, I figure we start off pretty simple. Um, I'm just going to show you a little thing, uh, a kind of loop clinic. So when you write music for video games, uh, you one of the quintessential things to do one of the quintessential skills that is unique to video games is the loop. So we're going to go through a little bit of basic loop 101 type stuff just to get this stream started. Eventually, I'll take uh, the cameras out and uh, we'll move around the studio a little bit. I'll show you everything that's going on here. Uh, but currently, we're just going to go with what we got now. A camera on me and uh, this camera over here down on the general rig. Um, I'm not going to use all of this today. Uh, we'll go into detail on all the other stuff as time goes on. Excuse me. But in the meantime, here we go. A piece of music I'm going to play now. Headphones on probably a good idea. Play a piece of music from a video game I scored. It just came out. It's called Rival. Uh, this is a piece that is not currently in the game. The game came out and is expanding, and I hope this piece makes it in. Initially, uh, when I wrote this piece, there was uh, uh, a lot of exciting things going on in the game and uh, very much <laughs> a frantic paste stuff so uh what we're going to hear first is something that is more frantic than is currently in the game i would imagine it will come up let's just listen to the music first 
We'll just go through it once. battle type stuff right some ethnic elements some orchestral elements lots of percussion uh typical of uh god of war sort of sort of sound um all right so how do you write seamlessly looping stuff there's it it helps to think about it ahead of time uh and there are tips and tricks to how to write music from the get-go that uh, lends itself to looping. But uh, there's, before we get into any of that, I'll say that uh, first and foremost, it's got to be good music. There's got to be a lot of interesting stuff going on that you just want to hear uh, again and again and again. Now, that might be just one simple melody like uh, Super Mario Brothers has and uh, a lot of the games from that era. It's a great melody. We've all heard it a trillion times. Our grandmothers could probably sing it. And we're still not sick of it <laughs> to this day. Uh, people who were too young to even have heard it in utero are remixing it and using it. It's one of the most beloved things. It's good music at its core. If it didn't seamlessly loop, uh, it wouldn't matter as much. Uh, for me, too, like the Quake soundtrack, that was written just through composed it doesn't have any interactive elements in it but it's just good music the first time i noticed music in a game that had obviously not been generated by the game engine you know uh when i was in college that game came out and uh i didn't realize at the time that that cd-rom technology employed that was the bell that rang that was going to let me join the ranks of game composers because i'm really just not a coder I really don't like programming computers, but uh, you don't have to anymore, and you didn't have to then. Trent Reznor wrote all that music in his studio, and it streamed off the CD in CD quality. And at that point, and from that point on, uh, we could do that. So, belief of that. But anyway, good music first. Uh, we'll just uh, hopefully could see it. It's my Twitch channel. I can say that's good music. I felt satisfied with it after beating myself up about it long enough, and the developers thought so as well. But how do we get things to loop? Well, uh, if we just simply put up a loop, um, like, uh, let's see. It starts on bar two. And uh, right now, what we're listening to, this is indeed a... Uh, the stems. This is a, a stem out of sorts. Stems, multi channel stems, that means the individual tracks, all the things that went into it. We don't have the MIDI session up right now. Uh, it's just easier, especially trying to run uh, a stream off of the same computer uh, of a multi computer situation. It, uh, it gets taxing. So I, uh, I just pulled in the stems in the MIDI file, which is just a straight 4 4 this time. We'll show you how to do it with mix meters soon enough but uh all right so we uh we have a lot of tracks going on here i have separated strings perk brass vocals and ethnic horns um i'm popping around through a lot of keys there are folks who would say to write music that loops it should stay in the same key or at least make itself return to the key it was in 
I say poppycock. But we'll get into a little bit more of those details. First and foremost, we need to worry about it just in a very technical audio way, coming back around and not sounding like somebody just hit rewind on the CD player. So let's see. I think the last... All right, bar 35 is technically the last bar here. So if I just put the loop at bar 35 and we roll through to it and it automatically comes back around to the beginning, you'll hear what that sounds like. Very obviously, like somebody just said, I want to hear it again. Bang. Popped it. Hit rewind. So we want it to not take the player out of the experience, right? We want it to keep playing. Uh, it, we want it to come back around and feel like it didn't just come back around, it, that the music just keeps going, right? So uh, there are instruments hanging over at the end there that weren't at the beginning and that's the problem that's the problem we're experiencing there so uh let's listen to it once again just the ending and i'll just let it ring out instead of looping <laughs> So we've got that barely audible, that barely in tune ethnic uh, ram's horn sort of thing going on. Some of those samples do have big ring offs. There's a choir in there that I believe has its own reverb. And this is before I'm using any reverb on anything. Any reverb that you're hearing is just in the sample themselves. I haven't added any reverb yet to any of these. So, uh, so here's the. Actually, I think there was delay in that particular, in the horns, that I did add. But it's baked into the stem. And then the choir. Yeah, you can hear they kind of cut off, but they still have a little bit of decay there, right? It would sound better if there was a reverb. So I've already, I've got one just loaded in, ready to roll, so that uh, it's quick. <laughs> And it's applied to most of them. All right, so that reverb is ringing off. If just the reverb was applied, we could hear this thing as a more seamless loop. So here we go. It's going to loop back to the beginning. <laughs> marginally better right it still kind of sounds like it just flipped but it's a little bit better so how do you really make this work well here's how i say to do it you bounce it as a stereo file and then you cut the very end of it with including the ring off of those horns and those choirs and the bells and the chimes and every other darn thing, the cymbal swishes, anything that was like, shh, that's got to be at the beginning as if they just had a repeat and the orchestra just kept playing and the room kept ringing and, uh, and the chimes kept going and uh, every other thing. So the way to do that, there's, there are folks who would copy and paste everything three times, bounce it, and then snip out the middle. Uh, I prefer to just bounce it once and do it once. And, uh, you know, this, the way this ends right here, you probably will want to, uh, if you're smart, which I wasn't in this case, you'll go ahead and write an ending, even if that's not what you deliver, because there's going to be a soundtrack record at some point, right? Soundtrack album. You're going to want to release this. Hopefully you're going to be allowed. Uh... It's better if, as a piece of music, there's an ending. I think I could kind of end it that way, but 
But anyway, uh, always write an ending. That's a little side tip. Uh, but now, let's go ahead and bounce this thing. All right, so it starts on bar two, right? I'm going to bounce it from the beginning because let me just show you. Some of these samples speak a little bit before the downbeat. Yeah, I'll just loop the uh, bar. <laughs> Technically, it should be bar zero. The first bar. Yeah, see? You know, there's a there's a, some vocal samples going sha and uh yeah and uh some other effects sort of things going on. You want to have all of those in there. Uh it it really is because of a uh, because of delays that I've had in to make sure that everything uh pre delays, like post delays, like reverse delays, negative delays. You have the MIDI sometimes these tra uh these samples uh, you hit the button, you know, you hit the key, it sends the MIDI note, start the, the sample, and there's a whoosh in it. Now, it depends on where you want that sample to be in the downbeat. You might have to have a negative delay set on the MIDI so that it actually hits the note previous to the downbeat to make it speak right away. Um, and there's different ones for different uh, different sample libraries, and it changes based on the tempo of your piece, what you're really going to want. It's part of those production things you have to keep track of. The trillion things that are beyond just writing music. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and bounce out everything so that everything is included in there. Uh, and we're going to start at bar one where there's nothing. And let's just listen to this thing. Let me make sure that the I can hear where the reverb ends. <laughs> I'll also watch the meter. Now it's totally out. So somewhere in 40. So 41 was a good guess. I put it to bar 40 to export. Now I'm running new window. I'm running new window here. I just got new window. I just upgraded from Cubase. I've been on Cubase for ever since like 93 on the Atari ST, uh, <laughs> the 520 STE, which had 520, it's like, that's half a meg. It had half a meg of memory. And I upgraded it to four meg. And that cost me, that probably cost me $200. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Uh, since then, I've been on that, and I, I just went to Nuendo. It's great. It's got a lot more uh, post-production tools in it than Cubase proper. Otherwise, it's just like Cubase. I did have a wonderful color scheme set up in Cubase, and I, it doesn't pour it over quite directly, so uh, it's going to take me a while to get this looking as pretty as I had Cubase looking. But uh, anyway, <laughs> you set your locators in Cubase or Nuendo, when you want to export something, and then it's going to uh, bounce out the track in whatever format you want. In this case, we're going to import it back in, and then we're going to turn off all the effects, and uh, we're going to include that uh, that reverb I turned on. Oh, you didn't see that. So um, here, let me uh, let me go to the two-screen deal. Okay. So uh, I've got two screens running here, and... Uh, down in the right corner, that's the mixer. And so down over here is the master out. And uh, let's see, we are running a few plugins here. Um, this is kind of immaterial to what we're doing. Uh, I think the uh, the Kush Omega Transformer, uh, the Neve version, is kind of, it really adds a certain, certain depth to things. It's, I don't know, it feels a little more real when I'm using these samples here. It feels more like it's in a room with that one. It's just a little bigger, a little warmer. Uh, I always put just a little bit of mid-range compression. It just seems to make the mix pop. And then I'm exciting it a little, if you will. Uh, kicking up a little bit of the high end with, again, Kush Audio, the Clarifonic. One of the most amazing little sizzle plugins. 
And then our old friend, the Waves Maximizer, in this case the L3, just a little bit, just a little bit, to keep it, uh, keep it from clipping, to slam it a little, because I'm sorry. I don't really subscribe to the Loudness Wars, but, you know, there is a Loudness War going on, so they have theirs, I have mine. It's like nuclear weapons. A little bit, a little bit needs to be there, all right? So here we go. We can just, uh, we can bounce it out. We're going to call it, uh, we'll call it Human Kingdom Boss Bounce. And it's not where I want to send it. Uh, I'm just going to throw it on the desktop make it easy we're gonna go ahead and import it into an audio track as well we'll bring the bounce back in so off she goes forty two seconds I guess this would be the place where I tell some kind of dad joke <laughs> actually Maybe a couple of shout outs. You know, anyone who's ever tried to set up for streaming, there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of different technologies, and there's a, lot, a trillion settings about which most of us know nothing. And I've had, uh, I've had some good help with this thing. So I got to give a shout out to uh, DJ Cutman, because he put out a video on uh, DJ Tech Tools and also on his YouTube channel, where he just rolls through OBS and shows you the best settings that he's found after much trial and error for doing uh, DJ streaming. And I'm going to be doing some DJ streaming later, but uh, this is music streaming. It's very much related. Same kind of thing. Music software, multiple cameras, that sort of thing. Uh, so thanks. I'll be linking to him later. I also need to thank Raw Glambition. She has been streaming a while, and she helped me play with this thing for I don't know how many hours last weekend trying to tie it all up, and I'd be still struggling with it <laughs> without her help as well. So thank you. Uh, I'll link both of these folks, and you can follow them if you so desire. I think you'll find it useful. All right, so it's in here. Now, um, now this is all mastered out, so we want to turn off all the mastering plugins we had on, all the ones I showed you. The, uh, the Omega Neve simulator and the mid-range compression and the exciter-ish thing and the maximizer. Turn them off because now we've got this track just where we need it. Now, it should sound the same when I play it. <laughs> Sounds like it. Now, we go to the end here. Let's see, what do we say? It was bar 35. Yeah, bar 35 is the end. Now, more than ever, if we turn on the loop, it should sound like a somebody slamming the CD repeat button. <laughs> Yeah. So how do we combat that? The first thing to do, the first thing anyone figured out how to do, you put the end at the beginning. So here's the track right here. Oh, let me go back to uh, let me go back to single screen view. Make it nice and big. All right, this is the bounce track down here. Very simply, we uh, come on. Let's get back here. We uh, we're gonna cut right there, bar thirty-five. We'll just drag this down here. Automatically creates another track. We're gonna want to start that at bar two. So yeah, if our music starts at bar two, then uh. 
This should give us a smooth, seamless loop. Let's see how she sounds. <laughs> A lot better, huh? Well, we're going to go one step further. Remember how I showed you? There's just a little bit of a shh at the very beginning. Well, we're going to take the beginning and put that at the end. So that that little shh happens. Where it's supposed to heading in all right see what we're doing there it's gonna go and then go back to the beginning so that ought to do it let's hear that loop one more time <laughs> So uh, let's go to the beginning now. Let me show you something. If the very beginning, the very first time this, see then we can bounce this out again, deliver that to the developer. They should be able to drop it right in as long as it's not an MP3 because MP3s add a few milliseconds in front of every bounce that you do or every import that you do. It's a little thing. So uh, generally you're going to be delivering waves or... Uh, Og Vorbies files, uh, those loop seamlessly by themselves. MP3s seem to add this little thing, so then you got it, somebody's got to tweak it again. But, um, all right, so listen to the very beginning, though. <laughs> sounds a little, uh, you know, it sounds just a little clipped. It's partially because it may be a little mooshed. <laughs> well, you hear the dun. The, the little hangover, you know, it makes for a seamless loop and not a perfect start. So depending upon how smart your game engine's going to be, you might want to just simply lower the volume a little on this thing so that, uh, so that the, the part that brings the loop, the seamless loop part back in, you, I don't know, you come up with the right balance of what's going to be a good start and a good loop. And, you know, you got to look in the game. When the music starts for a track like this, usually uh, somebody's yelling and screaming, some monster's coming out of a door, there's plenty of other noise. So you can have a kind of mooshy start, and it's not going to be noticed. Uh, other times you'll have like a musical stinger, a start. Other times your game engine's smart enough. You can have a stinger, or, you know, you can have different loop points. You can start one way, you can loop in the middle. Uh, and then move to other things, maybe uh, interactive layers come in and out. It's kind of uh, depends on your, uh, well, the capabilities of your audio engine and the amount of time anyone's going to devote to audio programming. So uh, all those things go into the decision making. But for the purposes of this little, uh, this little talk today, this Loop 101 Reverb Tail Edition, uh, you just got to make sure that everything that's ringing off at the, uh, the end winds up at the beginning. Anything that might have been whooshing in happens at the end, leading into the beginning. And uh, worry a little bit less about how the start isn't tight. And if it's a little bit more like wah, then I don't know. You got to you got to do a case by case compromise uh, assessment. But uh, but those are the issues. So here's a uh, it'll go into it and then it'll just loop
Yeah, I personally like it at uh, full volume there, you know. I'd rather have the seamless loop. But, you know, once again, this is for a very epic battle. So during the battle, there's going to be a lot of screaming, yelling, and slamming of weapons and spells and roaring of monsters. Or it's just going to be mayhem anyway. Uh, people aren't going to notice the loop so much. So I'm going to go right back to the, uh, the original thing for all music, not just music that has to loop. It's got to be good music. You know, you got to want to listen to it. In this case, a bunch of times. Uh, and it'll be fighting for attention, too. So as, if it's boring and there's not a lot of frequency material across all spectrums, you might not hear it ever at all. So, uh, you know, those are things to think about. Make sure there's plenty of options. Uh, we'll get into more of that as time goes on. But as for the first stream ever, I think uh, we'll conclude right there. Um, there it is, Gerard Marino, stream number one, looping 101. Uh, I hope you subscribe, and, uh, you know, thanks for coming out, and we'll see you soon.